Okay, and so as we finish World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, that's definitely going to lead to um, the situation where Adolf Hitler is going to be able to manipulate the, the population and convince them that um, the spread of the German Empire and the Holocaust is necessary. So let's look at the cause of World War II in this video. Three minutes long. Here we go. After roughly 20 years of peace, the world went to war for a second time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring how World War II began. The Second World War is considered a direct result of the First World War, due to unresolved tensions and anger from that conflict. However, the Great Depression of the 1930s was another factor that led to bitterness and a shift in public attitudes to... That was Benito Mussolini. ...strict dictatorships. World War One also facilitated... Adolf Hitler, uh, I, I should have said Benito Mussolini, was the fascist dictator of Italy, and obviously Adolf Hitler is the leader of Germany. ...the rise of Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. Hitler's allies in Italy and Japan also acted aggressively with the hope of expanding their... Uh, Hikotama, or uh, Tojo or something like that. Was the, the, the leader of these Japan. countries towards the communism of the Soviet Union was just another factor that helped lead to war. In fact, a number of ideologies helped spark the war. Aggressive expansionism by countries like Germany and Italy, fascist dictatorships, and deep-seated racism were all considered contributing factors. This racism was mostly in Germany, where the Nazis believed the Aryan race was the master race and superior to the Slavic people. The countries that eventually formed the Allied Alliance acted passively in the face of the Axis threat. This was partly out of sympathy, <coughs> partly out of guilt because of the Treaty of Versailles that blamed the Germans for World War I, and partly because countries like Britain underestimated Hitler. Meanwhile, the League of Nations proved itself ineffective in the fight to keep the peace. The League of Nations was created at the end of World War I. It's part, it was created with the Treaty of Versailles. What's interesting about the Treaty of Versailles is it's pretty much based off of the 14 points which were written by Woodrow Wilson, who's going to be the president during World War I. Ironically, the United States does not join the League of Nations, and it does not ratify the Treaty of Versailles, so we stay out of it. And so the League of Nations, is, it's, it's cool. It's like we're saying, hey, we're going to have this new... Um, hall monitor and these guys are going to go through the halls and make sure no one's on their phone during um, passing periods. If they see people on their phones and they don't do anything about it, they're ineffective. And so when the Treaty of Versailles says that Germany and Hitler can't rebuild their military, they can't start making weapons again, they can't do this, they can't do that, and Hitler starts to do it and nothing happens to him, it, it pretty much shows that the League of Nations is, is worthless. It's completely ineffective. Okay? Months after Japan withdrew from the League of Nations in 1933, Germany did the same. In 1935, Germany violated the Treaty of Versailles by introducing mandatory military conscription and by beginning rearmament. That country continued to violate the treaty in the years that followed. In fact, in 1936, Hitler remilitarized the Rhineland. It was around this time Nazi Germany formed their important alliance with Italy. Soon after, the two countries offered support to the separatist movement in the Spanish Civil War, while the existing government was supported by the Soviet Union. These events foreshadowed the Second World War as both sides were testing different methods and weapons of battle. One specific event that foretold the horrors of World War II was the April 1937 bombing of Guernica. By 1938, Hitler's motives were clearer. In a move referred to as the Anschluss, the Nazis annexed Austria into Germany, despite the fact this also violated the Treaty of Versailles. But again, League of Nations, no, one, no one's going to um, regulate it, okay? It's one thing to make laws, but if you don't go and stop it and punish it when you find people breaking those laws, you're ineffective. After that year, Hitler was appeased by both Britain and France when they signed the Munich Agreement. This allowed Hitler to overtake a German-speaking section of Czechoslovakia in order to keep the peace. In August 1939, Nazi Germany... People tried to appease Hitler at the beginning. Appease means just give them what they want. Uh, to, like if a baby's just screaming at, 
at a restaurant, whatever, you know, the mom's going to give her a pacifier or whatever that, that little baby wants, okay? So Hitler wanted Poland. Hitler wanted part of Czechoslovakia, and they didn't want him. They were afraid that he would start a war, and so they said, okay, fine, take it. Just stop asking for stuff. And that's just going to show Hitler that Europe is a bunch of sissy boys, and they're going to let me do what I want, okay? Signed a peace treaty with the Soviet Union. However... Um, I don't think I need to tell you this, Adolf Hitler is shady, and he's going to have an agreement with Russia, and later on, double cross him and stab him in the back, and actually invade Russia. First official event of World War II followed soon after. Due to long-standing tensions, Germany invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939. Britain and France warned Germany that should the troops not withdraw, war was imminent. When the Nazis did nothing, Britain and France declared war on Germany, and World War II officially began. Okay, and so that's a look at, at the causes of World War II. Again, the United States won't come in until 1941, where probably by the time U.S. troops hit the ground, 1942, because the event that brings the United States into World War II is going to be the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on December 7th, 1941.